Good day, fellow investors. 2020 is over and I wish you a healthy, happy, free 2021. And as we are investors, I wish you an extremely profitable new year. Talking about performance, the best performing fund over 2020 was ARK Invest. 150% over one year, that's a remarkable performance. So we are going to look at that because it explains the market, how investing works these days, what are the risks and what drives investment returns, which is the key to know if you want to do something similar. And then you'll see whether ARK's strategy, nothing bad with it, very smart, works for you or there are other strategies that might be better suited for you. If you wish me also a happy new year, just click that like button as it helps the YouTube algorithm and supports the channel. Thank you very much. So let's start with ARK Investments. Uh, recently, a week ago, a Bloomberg interview with Kathy Wood came out. Half an hour, I urge you to watch it because it's a perfect example of how the business of investing works. What's investing and what's the business of investing and how those are connected and that's crucial. And I really urge you to watch that. I'll put a link to the video interview in the description below. The main topics of the videos are the following. Marketing. ARK has the best marketing ever. Their focus is on growth and exponential growth, unlimited possibilities, perfect sales pitch. Then they focus when it comes to strategy on small companies, small sizes that offer extreme potential. And when it comes to risk, the only mention is a small correction. If you're a salesman, if you sell funds, you must never mention risks or just write those risks somewhere with little, little letters. Oh, there those are. But all she mentions is just, oh yes, there is always the possibility for a correction, but long term, five years, exponential growth. And this brings to the key of ARK's investment success, which are flows. Amazing marketing focused on Twitter, a lot of interviews, strategies, there where other analysts don't go, big audience, especially retail investors, high inflows of cash, and followed by great performance. This is something really explanatory of the current investment environment. Further to the marketing, you will see as you look at the video, all the key concepts there for marketing confidence, exponential growth, saying something against the government, <laughs> despite it's very vague, five-year horizon, 20% return promise, and that's also in the title of Bloomberg's video. So that's what they, Promise, 20% over the next five years. Why should you invest in anything else? Just put all your money into ARK. You'll double it every 3.6 years. You'll quadruple your money in five, six years. And that's it, right? You will see this also in the video. I feel our portfolios are filled with Amazons. Of course, Amazon did greatly. So that's the best marketing sales pitch. This is further explained by the retail trading boom that has happened really, really amazing over 2020. And ARK, with the interviews, with the social media exposure, really nailed that, let's say, market. Then something interesting, she also mentions credibility. So how she has been in the business for 40 years, how she bought Amazon in 2002. Even if I wonder, if I look at her performance, it hasn't been much better than the S&P 500 up to 2009. There is just this difference. Don't know whether they sold or went into bonds and then they went back and that was all the difference in performance. Returns prior to ARK have been not that special, 4-5% over 10 years. So Katie Wood will not be the next Buffett because Buffett has been doing it for 50 years without new inflows of funds, which is extremely important. And she has been doing it for five years of which just three were really profitable because of flows. Talking about flows, there is great data explaining how the market and ARC's performance works. So this is to December 23, so a week there from Eric Balchunas from Bloomberg. ARK funds, 
each got a billion in positive inflows. So that's really staggering to look at. And if you look at the month's performance and that week when they got a billion, they went from 123 quickly to 135. So for a fund, that's a great performance in a week of what where we are 11%. Similarly for the other ARC fund, 94 to higher where we are 105, 10% up. That's staggering performance with 1 billion in into the fund, their value went up 10%. So 1 billion of positive flows increases the value of the funds by 10%. That's key to understand because longer term, the cash flows for ARC were 9.5 billion over the year. They say now how the assets under management are 50, depending on the day, 50 billion, but five, 10 billion of inflows increase the return. 1 billion increased 10% on smaller at smaller capital base earlier. The 10 billion pushed it up 20, 30, 50, 100%. I'm arguing that the complete performance of ARK Invest is just due to flows. Let me show you. So let's look at ARK Innovation ETF. Let's look at the holdings and let's really discuss, okay, one small cap stock CRISPR therapeutics that they have a billion invested and 6.3 million shares held. If you look at the stock there, when ARK got a billion in, 148 going up to 173. That is 17% up. If we look at ARK's Exposure is 5.6% of the fund. So they got in a billion, 5.6%, 5% is 50 million. 50 million invested in CRISP increased the stock by 16.5%. If we look at the market capitalization of 11 billion, lower it 1.5 billion. 50 million of inflows increased the market capitalization for 1.5 billion. So that's 30 times. One dollar invested in such a small cap increases the market capitalization of such a company by 30 times, creates market value of 30 times higher. And that's how ARK performed. Marketing flows performance. Performance, <laughs> beautiful marketing, and it's a circle that works amazingly. And as we said, over the year, 9.5 billion of inflows. And if we look at ARK's position in CRISP Therapeutics, Kathy Wood. So she, in November, the last quarter of November, added 1 million shares. Then we have 1.3 million shares in Q1. We have added, what is this, Q2, 2.2 million shares. We have seen 2 million shares adding over the Q3. We don't have yet the data for Q4, but I bet it will be staggering because of the inflows. And if you look at the company, the revenues, we are at revenues that are practically what? I don't know if this is correct, but this should be correct. 65 million shares. ARK Fund has, on such a small company, 10 percent of the company they will uh, one day if they continue will be the largest shareholder they will decide on how to manage the company which creates a risk for the future because these small caps when the things inverts it will get ugly nevertheless one year performance look at this staggering performance because of ARK's buying. 2018 also great performance and if we go back to 2018 look ARK buying buying a little bit and here the real bulk of shares. So when they sold when they had to sell because of outflows it goes down very very fast on small sales. And also if you look at performance over the year what explains it? Look from April really the bulk of inflows were very very positive a little decline in 
September and slower in October. A little bit of outflows, but the key is that the marketing did great. The performance attracts more money, which again we have seen on CRISPR stock, how it increases again the valuation, just 50 million in, pushes it up 1.5 billion, increases the performance, the asset under management, and that's the great cycle that ARC has been banking on. Really smart, really amazing, remarkable investing strategy. Not investing, speculating strategy. Really hats off. Okay, here the market was crashing, low inflows. Then you see September, lower inflows and immediately down as the market, similarly in end of October. And now we have also had the first outflows and immediately you see this decline as the outflows started, the first outflows this year, and that's a huge decline of what, almost 10%. And we have discussed this by discussing the inelastic market hypothesis that on a market perspective says that if one dollar of flows gets into the market, market capitalization increases five dollars. But with ARC, if one dollar comes in, the market capitalization of the stock, especially these small stocks with 60 million shares and fixed small floats, increases 10, 20, 30 times. And that's how the performance is done. Check that video also, I'll put a link in the description below on the inelastic market hypothesis. Perfect explanation of this market. So I would argue that the a big chunk of ARC's performance is not from fundamentals. Yes, those businesses are growing, but I looked a little bit through their portfolio and that's price to sales ratios of 50, 100, banking on promises of growth, etc. That works as long as it works. We have seen it and we'll discuss more about that in the risk so that you also know the risk side of the investment style. It's not just about corrections, it's a little bit more. Before discussing the risk that also explains the market risk because it's all about flows these days just to show the fundamentals and then you see that it's all about flows. If we look at the dividend yields 1.6% in the United States a little bit higher in Canada lower flows of course everything is focused on the United States if you go to emerging markets a little bit higher dividends Australia Frank dividends, so a little bit higher yield, they are still good. Russia, 7.7%. Europe, very low, low dividends. But still better than the market and still better than many stocks that don't even pay a dividend. Because if you look at history, 99.7% of returns from 1920s till 2010 was made of inflation and dividends. There have been booms and busts and great booms and great growth prom promises but those didn't deliver sustainable long-term investment returns to shareholders that's key this time might be different with arc but i'll let you decide whether it's different or not why is that because if something performs greatly during the first 15 years based on flows based on promises based on whatever over the next 15 years, it performs badly. So good performance, bad performance in the future. Because when it doesn't reflect in the fundamentals, profitability, dividends, asset value, whether it's when it's just on promises, then what is forecasted is mean reversion. When that mean reversion will come, nobody knows. That's again a strategy in favor of ARC. As long as they can play the game, they'll be great. So when it comes to strategies for 2021, a great strategy might be to just follow ARC. Not even ARC. I would go for the smaller cap stocks that have less liquidity, less float, because as inflows come into ARC, those which shoot up, you can make 50% just like that. That's one strategy, but you have to keep in mind the risks. And here we can talk about the risks. Currency hedging craze, also inflows, great returns, but as the craze passed, everything went down. 
Janus 20 fund exploded in the 1990s, the Nasdaq exploded in the 1990s based on promises, 100 times sales or no sales, and it all mean reverted. 2000s CGM fund exploded and then you see the assets under management, huge inflows that really increase this virtuous cycle upward. But when things turn, just a little bit of outflows really make it very, very bad. And again, inflows, outflows, it doesn't really help. This is the danger also with ARC. If there are outflows in one year, and they are forced to sell the positions in crisp or something like that. Okay, they are actively managed, so they will try to sell the largest floats and that, but that increases the risks long term because when they are forced to sell the smaller caps, the lower float, the inelastic stocks, this will look very, very ugly. And it's not just retail investors. Don't think it's just retail investors. Big investment banks create products that the client wants. And if there is a client from who knows where, Saudi Arabia with 100 million, and he says, I want to bet on ARK 10 million, then JP Morgan will react. So they are creating you only live once bets on ARK ETFs, structured notes combined with debt and derivatives. Nobody remembers the 2000s. Structured notes combined with debt and derivatives. Does it ring a bell? Oh no, there is no risk. The risk is a correction, right? It's up to you to decide how you invest your money. I'm just here to discuss the pros and cons. Risk reward is this channel. Boring as hell, but over the long term, trust me, it works. Further, if we look at margin changes, in 2020, huge margin bets as the market goes up, more money goes into, everybody gets greedy, margin increases, increases, increases. And we know how that ended in the 2000s and in the 1990s. Doesn't mean it will end because there is so much volatility in the market, but it means that you have to watch the flows. And we have seen the decline, first decline in outflows in years. This is the September decline. October, no inflows that we mentioned, but first decline in years and ARC went down significantly. Another very important risk, speaking of margin, Katie Wood, when the fund was doing badly in 2014-15, sold an option to their affiliate and distributor so that they can buy the whole company controlling stake. Of course, it's her company, that's the trouble. But that's what she was forced to do in 2016 to survive, that's key. And now there was a battle of ownership. Of course, without Cathy, the company is worth much, much lower. So they came to an agreement, but would repurchase the option for an undisclosed sum. The transaction was financed through a multi-trench term loan financing facility. So Katie Wood took that, to buy her own company and she will have to perform to get the stake to keep being an owner of the company. That might really skew her risk and reward. She might take more risk so that she has the money to pay the multi-trench term loan. Those are extremely risky situations to be for an asset manager because Warren Buffett never had to worry about finances for the last 50 years, he made rational investment decisions. She had t terrible times the first two years, funded her own with the fund with her own money, sold an option to partners to survive, and now she has debt that forces her, her to perform to finance a loan on her company. Extremely risky behavior from underlying business fundamentals, but you live only once, so why not play the heck with it? And you can do the same when it comes to strategy. As I said, f follow the flows, follow arcs, follow the Fed's flows, the stimulus flows, going into markets. Uh, I'll talk about cash because I get so many questions. Sven, we are sitting on cash. What to do now with the market up already? So I'll make a video about that. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And then we'll discuss many stocks that I think are still good 
in this environment. And we'll talk about stocks because the second strategy for 2021 is, okay, follow the flows, but the second is stick to the fundamentals. Those are not great, but globally, there are some places with good fundamentals. And that will also be my focus in 2021. I have to increase my portfolio followed stocks to 20 stocks so that I learn as much as possible about them. And there are fundamentals. It won't be exciting as ARK's business, the growth, the genomics, the promises, the revolution. It won't be that. It will be freakingly boring investing. And as the greatest trader and fund flow follower of all time says George Soros, if investing is entertaining, then you're doing something wrong. Thank you for watching. Click that like button. Looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video.